Welcome to the chain. We're your hosts. I'm Kendall Landreth. And I'm Sarah Shower. And this is the BCC the Club. Club. <laughs> where each week, what do we do? We deep dive down a rabbit hole of the internet and we talk about it. Yeah. And discuss our opinions. And today, we're talking about TikTok Live. Mm-hmm. The act, the art of going live on TikTok. Um, you know, I feel like, yeah. I've never seen a non-upsetting TikTok live ever in my entire life. Yeah, because, I mean, there's the difference between, like, when a creator goes live. Like, the creator just does any type of content they go live. But I feel like there are creators that are specifically live yeah. creators. And those people are incredibly jarring. Yeah, it's very jarring, very upsetting. But also, <laughs> yes. every time I research what things cost on there, oh, like, yeah. when people are like, thanks for the unicorn hat. And then I look up that, it's, like, $5,000. And I'm like, also, these TikTok live people are billionaires? I yeah. don't really understand. I don't know how to. I've gone live on TikTok a couple times, and I know that I do have some like cash in the in my fund, yeah. but I don't know if I I don't know how to pull it out or if I want to. Yeah, I know it's like at least twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, see, that's what always happens to me. I went live one time years ago, and after I was getting sent all these like. I don't remember what it was. Probably like a, a pistachio with eyes on it or something weird. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I bet I'm loaded. And I went <laughs> in. It was like, you have 85 cents. And I was like, wow, sending me a penny feels rude. Yeah. Not to sound ungrateful, but <laughs> just keep it. It's okay. No, I know. <laughs> but I mean, um, God, I, I feel like the only thing I would use that fun for is if like for some reason I wanted to promote a TikTok. Just Wait, so I don't, oh. but I've I've never I've only done that once just to like see what the reach would be. How did it do? I mean, it did like any normal video, <laughs> so I was like, this is a waste. But I just the uh, the act of pulling the money off and then putting it like through taxes, it's twenty dollars. Yeah. It's just another form. I just can't. I can't. Do, the promotion stuff always scares me because anytime I've seen someone, I'll, I'll have like a friend from high school who posts a selfie, and at the top it's like, this has been paid to promote and I'm like deeply embarrassed yeah <laughs> I never want anyone to know that I've paid to promote I guess it wouldn't be that crazy since I do this for a job but no I, yeah I'm I think interested. yeah I guess it's not that crazy like yeah. um I mean we essentially entertain for money as well yeah exactly. so <laughs> what what's the difference between us and them except theirs is like on the fly yeah yeah so how was your week it was really good so I when have... I came in here you were I was like how was your week and you were like it was good. I've learned a lot about myself in the last couple days. So I I'm have... looking forward to hearing it. Okay. So, I am obsessed with sociology uh -huh. and psychology. Like, I've read 18 books since the start of the new year. Yeah. And I um, started a story graph. It's not public, guys, because um, I still need to write reviews. And people keep asking. But, like... Um, What's that? A story graph, it, like, charts you, like, stats for, like, the books you read. Like, Oh, is it, like, a... Uh, there's another one. Isn't there, like, a... Um, it's... <sighs> Sorry. It's... Goodreads. Goodreads is what yeah. I say, yeah. But everyone was like, don't do that one because it's like through Amazon or whatever. Oh. And I was like, all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I just did, but I, um, story graph, all of the, most of them are sociology and psychology. And so I was like, that makes sense because I, like, uh, my entire life have felt like very disconnected from people. Like, I moved around a lot because I was a yeah. military brat. Um, just like the ADHD, the autism, I feel kind of at a distance from people. Also being lesbian is incredibly isolating. Yeah. My parents are like, um, not loving. So like, uh, I felt very detached from people. And so I was like, why am I reading like sociology and psychology books? It's cause like, I want to know about people. Yeah. Like, cause I want to know how they connect, you know? Yeah. I said like, you know, to be, uh, known is to be loved and I want to know to love. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's very nice, Sarah. I know. And so, okay. And now I'm reading, um, the book I'm reading right now is called Unwell Women. Mm -hmm. And so I originally, it's about medical discrimination and misdiagnosis in women. And so why I wanted to read it is cause it's Women's History Month. Yeah. And so before this book, I was supposed to read Black Trans Feminism and I was like, okay, so I know that there's going to be medical discrimination in this book and then the b black trans feminism is incredibly hard to read like it's a poetic analysis it's yeah. not a journalistic essay and have you ever seen someone analyze something through poetry yeah it's hard yeah i had to i had a dictionary out and i was like i felt like yeah. i was in school but i am excited to read it so i was like i'm gonna pause this and then read about medical discrimination but then the book um is mainly about like menstruating people's like history yeah which is important to know but i'm like i don't feel like i'm gonna get the full like a, a more rounded trans ex, like experience discussion yeah. in this book, so I, I may have to read something else after that. Well, I feel like that probably is like a whole book in it. I mean, like oh, yeah. eighty books in itself. So it honestly, might be good to just be like, 
we'll focus on this as a separate sector yeah. because that is so, there's so much to talk about with that. Yeah. Oh, and then, okay. This is for everyone. You need to listen to what I'm saying. The, <laughs> I have read the greatest book there ever is. If you have PTSD or complex PTSD, uh-huh. you have got to read What My Bones Know by Stephanie Fu. Okay. When I tell you Every time I read something, like, she, it was the most well-researched, like, book I've ever read. Also, it's incredibly triggering, but, I mean, it's a book on PTSD, yeah. you know? Yeah. Which is not childhood PTSD. It's complex PTSD. When, do you want to explain the difference in those? PTSD usually happens when you have, like, a singular traumatic event, like uh, car accident or traumatic yeah, event. Yeah, yeah. Um, complex PTSD is when you're continuously exposed to something. I see, I see. Like, mainly, like, in childhood. Like, yeah. if your parents are... Mm. Yeah. And so um, <laughs> it's incredibly, I just put my finger in my mouth. Um, it's incredibly, <laughs> but it's such a good book. I literally like screamed and I posted a video on TikTok. And then Stephanie Fu, the writer. Oh, I saw this. She followed me on Instagram. And then we were going back and forth about like book recommendations. And she was like, you know, she was like, you made an impact. And I was thinking that I, my TikTok made an impact. Like, oh, she was like, oh, someone read my book. Yeah. It literally, my TikTok, and she said so, like pushed it to like number two. In oh my god, psychology, fun. and I was like, ah! but yeah, we're they're never gonna. You gotta um, start a book. To- well, I guess you could just do it on your TikTok, but you gotta start it. You gotta make a book channel or something. I would love to. I mean, I guess I you could just do it because I. But I think you have so much. You're having so much fun with it, and that's so great. Yeah. I mean, I feel like psycho sociology. You're saying is what you're very interested in. Yes. Would you ever like pursue a career in it? That's what I'm saying. I am. Wow. Right now. Oh, my God. I was like, okay, so you know how a lot of people use comedy to like, um, because they can't be serious Mm -hmm. or they feel like people don't take them seriously. So the only time they're actually listened to is with jokes. Yeah. And so I've used that as like a defense mechanism my entire life. But like with growing with therapy, I still have a love of comedy, but I'm like, I don't need a defense mechanism, but I still want to do comedy. I'm not like... why, Why not just comedy for the purpose of connecting with others? Yeah. And I was like, that is like... A sociologist like approach to comedy, yeah. And so I feel like this renewed energy because it's not like I'm like joking. So you know, like yeah. to get people off my back, it's like joking yeah. to connect. But yeah, that's so, so that's, great. I know. Wait, then one more thing. Naomi moved in. A very nice. Is yeah. it fun? Yeah, and uh, Naomi has a cat named Pharaoh, and Dopey is obsessed, and Dopey wow. follows Pharaoh around, but Pharaoh's not ready yet. Oh, have they had they met before you guys moved in? Briefly once, when nice. um, Naomi's old place is getting fumigated. That's nice that Dopey is a good sport with stuff like that. Oh yeah, he's a ham. He just wants to be loved. <laughs> <laughs> I literally texted you the other day and was like, "Please send me," because I was trying to explain to my partner what your cat looks like sitting up like a person he sits like a man it's really funny and i was like this is not doing it justice you have to send a photo and it's really good Mm -hmm. dopey's perfect it's very nice thank you i did want to ask because you literally just got back from japan last night i did i like it's so weird i was trying to explain this but it was hard because i'm so tired so it wasn't making any sense but i was like it's so weird because we got on a plane in we were actually in taiwan for the portion of it not japan but we were in taiwan we got on a plane at 11 p.m. on the 17th. Yeah. And then we landed in LAX at 9 p.m. on the 17th, like 12 hours later. Yeah. So it was just so weird. It was like we went back in time, even though I'd been on a flight for so long. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was so good. It was so, it was nice. I'm actually not as tired today as I thought I was going to be, which makes sense because I slept the whole flight, which I've never done in my entire life. Yeah. For like 10 hours I slept. And then I got home. And, like, my partner had a tough time with it where they just didn't sleep at all last night. But I love to sleep. So I just fell asleep again. So I yeah. really slept. I've slept for, like, 20 hours. So I feel good. <laughs> good. Yeah. I was going to ask. I was like, did you want to reschedule? Because, like, no. the idea of, like, I know, but, like, flying for 12 hours and then the next morning just being, like, business as usual. Yeah. I mean, I sometimes I'm like, I guess that's what you got to do because I, I do feel like. Uh, I just need to get back on track. I just need to like, get back into the zone. Yeah. Because otherwise I'll sleep. I would have like slept all day. Like I uh, turned on my TV this morning. I had my dog Angel went with me in bed. It was so nice. I missed yeah. her so much. And I watched Cars, my favorite movie. <laughs> Perfect movie to wake up to. It's such a good movie. <laughs> I'm literally Cars. I'm obsessed with Cars. Yeah. I love the movie Cars so much. So I watched that this morning. Um, no, but it feels good to get back. Um, but just sorry if I seem literally insane on today's episode. Because I feel a little like my brain is... A, a little crispy deep fried no yeah i i understand that i um yeah i that's fine i feel like after <laughs> fly no after flying like people are gonna be a little bit weird yeah you I, know i did have a 
literal mental breakdown on this plane because I do you fly a lot. Sometimes, Sometimes, yeah. I feel like there's no good system in place for when you arrive on the plane where I have all my bags and they're like, you need to put it in the overhead overhead compartment but everyone's like right behind you like an inch away from you and you feel like you're like oh I like don't have time to put all my bags up there so then I was like going into my seat and then having to like come out and be like sorry I need to put my bags out and then this I, I turned around and my head pillow hit this guy in the face oh. and I was like sir I'm so sorry and then a guy was like you just hit that guy in the head with that pillow and I was like yeah I know I just apologized to him I'm so sorry and then I like kept going back and apologizing but then I was like people were behind me being like you gotta move and I, it was like horrible and then I got back to my seat and I started crying because I felt so bad and so embarrassed and my girlfriend was like that was crazy uh calm down it's fine and they turned cars on for me on the airplane and I said okay yeah. I watched Monsters University in Japanese okay I got very inspired on this trip to learn Japanese. And honestly, I'm doing an incredible job. Hell yeah. I've always really struggled with languages, um, including <laughs> English, yeah. which is my first no. language. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, just had a hard, like I always wanted to learn Spanish. I would try and it was just so hard for me, I think with my learning disability to like keep it in my brain, but also like remember the order of stuff yeah. and remember like it just it, I'm sure I could do it but it took me a long time and then I feel like on this trip in Japan I was like I really want to do it I'm gonna learn it and I was like wow it's so much easier to learn a language when you're in a country where they like every most people speak that language you're trying to learn yeah um and they're very not like I feel like they are ex like people in Japan were very excited when I would say like something in Japanese yeah versus like in France I feel like if you like try to say Bonjour. They're like, shut the fuck up. Well, that's the You're point. not French. <laughs> no. I'm like, I know. And they're like, shut up. And I'm like, can I order a water? And they're like, I don't speak English. And you're like, okay, <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um, so that was very nice. Yeah. I also feel like um, you said you tried to learn Spanish. I don't know if this is correct at all. But maybe it's since uh, Spanish and English share the same alphabet and similar sounds. Yeah. When you try to learn something, you might associate it with the English word. But I feel like since yes. your Japanese is a completely new alphabet and sound like system, yeah. that maybe your brain is like, okay, I can start from scratch. Yes, 100%. Because I think there is, that's so true. Because I was like, why is this clicking so much faster for me? Because mm -hmm. everyone was like, you struggle with language, you're going to try to learn Japanese. It has a whole, like, it, it has like three alphabets that you're yeah. going to have to learn. And of course, I'm hyperfixated. So I've already learned like one of the alphabets. But, you know, I'm like gearing up to learn uh Katakana? I don't know. I learned okay. Hiranga while I was there. I have no idea. Um, but I was like, I feel like it's just so separate from English versus, yeah, with like so many words in Spanish are the same as like the English word. Yeah. Or like so close and some things are just the same or, but then some, whereas like in Japanese, most things are just completely oh, yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, I've only word like, I've only learned like 60 words, but the closest would be like pasapoto, which is passport. But mm -hmm. that's like a, I, I don't know. But everything else is just so different. Yeah. Like, no there means something else than, like, no in English and Spanish. I don't know. Anyways. No, exactly. That's, like, um, this is, like, kind of related, a little bit separate. I think, like, my favorite, like, if I briefly have learned about languages, I think German and Chinese are my favorite because they seem so literal with their words. Yeah. Like, you know, like, how something can suggest something else? Yeah. Like, it's like, no, this is school for children who are about <laughs> to turn 13. Like, they yeah. have a word for that, and you're like, Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. I, yeah. It's been so fun though. I feel like it's been like um I don't think I'll probably ever have children and I felt like I've been able to like set up a little um like sometimes I watch on TikTok though like I homeschool my kids and yeah. for some reason it really it's just a part of my brain that I'm like, "Well, I wish I could set up a school in my house that looks kind of fun." You know yeah. what I mean? Like not a reason to have children. But I'm like, "Oh, that and I also wouldn't homeschool my children." Yeah. But I um do feel like I've been able to like it feels like I'm teaching a baby how to read a little bit where I have yeah. to buy these like children's workbooks and like children's like watch children's yeah. TV in Japanese or whatever. And we went to a Miyazaki museum okay. in Japan and it was really cool because they have when you go to the Miyazaki museum, they have a short that's like only showed at the museum. Mm -hmm. um, so you like can't see it anywhere else. You can't whatever. And it was so cute. And I bought like the, the book version of it in Japanese but it's like for children and then we went to the Pokemon Center because I was with some boys on this trip not the boys are the only people who like Pokemon but yeah <laughs> they're the only ones who are gonna force me to go to Pokemon Center they went yeah. to all they were like there's four in Japan we have to go to all of them and we were all, we were all like no you guys can go do that we're not going to four Pokemon Centers but thank you so much but I went to one and I got like a children's Pokemon yeah. book that I'm gonna read 
Like that's my, I'm like, my goal is to read this by the end of like the year or however yeah. long it takes me to read a children's book. But I can read all the letters in it, which I feel like is exciting, but I have no idea what any of it means, but I'm very excited. Oh yeah, I'm excited for you. Um, Naomi speaks Polish and they have like a bunch of books and they have like all the Harry Potter series in oh, Polish. Oh, fun. But like Polish, I like, when I, d- I couldn't, I, I noticed the Harry Potter cover but like this is at the time when I was still drinking. Yeah. Like I literally had almost like a full breakdown because I was like, I am I drunk that I can't? It's all in <laughs> Polish, but it was like the Harry Potter books. Yeah. So I was literally like, I'm I'm hallucinating now. But no, it's just That's um. Funny. Yeah. Um. Okay, we're talking about TikTok Live today. We are no transition. Just <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> just appearing on your for you page right now. <laughs> Yeah, no yeah. consent to see what you're watching. You don't want to see what you're watching. No. You feel like everything I've, I would say 50% of things I see on TikTok Live, I'm like, this feels like I should be reporting this to someone, but yeah. I don't know who. Um, it, it may not even be in America, so maybe I don't know what's legal in other yeah. places, but this feels wrong. Um, TikTok Live's a wild place. Do you ever go live on TikTok? I go live sometimes to do my makeup because, like, I that's the only time I, like, want to chat with someone sometimes. Yeah. You know, like, well, I mean... Yeah, and then when I do my makeup, everyone, like, keeps... The, my main problem is that, like... The people ask the same question over and over again. I wish I could pin answers. Yeah. They're like, "What eyeshadow?" And what eyeshadow is? Thirty minutes later, I'm like, "Oh my god, you should have just please, please." That reminds me of this woman on TikTok Live, who my friend Lily showed this to me the other day, and I was like, "What? People are obsessed with her. She probably makes fucking millions of yeah. dollars." And she just like every time she sent a thing, she says a thing, yeah, like a specific thing. So, like, every time she gets sent an ice cream, she goes, she licks a fake ice cream cone and goes, mmm, ice cream's so good. <laughs> and But she does it with all, but people are like, she's amazing because she literally does it the same way every time. Yeah. Like, people are like, she looks like she's AI, but she's not. And she's just like, mmm, ice cream's so good. Mmm, ice cream's so good. And then ever so often, she's French. She, like, yells at her son. Oh, yeah. That's the only time she stops. She'll be like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> and it is insane. But that just reminded me of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, she, but she gets hundreds of thousands of views on these lives people yeah. love it they will stay up and watching her for hours just go ice cream's so good ice cream's so good damn people are easily entertained you know what i think about with the french you know how americans have the reputation to be like dumb mm-hmm. like is that i mean but not all of us are dumb like, yeah but like is that this <laughs> is every french person rude yeah but no, <laughs> you know like everyone's I've like i've never met one that's not. i mean because like i i've never been to france so i don't know what it's like is it yeah i had a friend in college at my acting school who was French and he uh-huh. was very nice almost a little too nice and yeah. I was like what's going on here so he was very nice um, but that that's the, but anytime I so maybe one on one they're mm-hmm. better anytime you get them alone <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get them alone they can open up a little bit yeah but I haven't spent much time in France but I to people who have spent time in France I've had conversations with and they're like people are so mean oh They'll yeah be like, D- don't try to speak for also I'm like okay anyone I know who's traveled a lot in or been to France, usually has gone to Paris. Yeah. And I'm like, don't live in Paris and then be annoyed by tourists. Like, that always irritates me so much. I feel uh-huh. like people would do that with Times Square when I lived in New oh, York. Oh, yeah. Where they'd be like, <laughs> like, they'd be in New York and they'd be like, of course, there's people up at 5 a.m. waiting. And I'm like, yeah, you're in Times Square. Like, why would you live near Times Square? Like, I feel like oh, yeah. that's nice. Whenever I would go to Times Square, I'd be like, wow, everyone's having such a good time <laughs> at the, what is it called? A... Uh, Shrimp, uh, bubblegum shrimp. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just like the vibe of Times Square. But don't act like, you're like, why is everyone here? Oh, yeah. Um, especially when your city like relies on, I'm like, you yeah. live in Paris. Chill out. Anyways, um, I don't know much about the French. Yeah. Do you want to know something like if you're ever like really bored or upset one day? Like, um, I know, like, look at fast food restaurant reviews in tourist <laughs> traps because tourists are, they're new to the area, and they also have incredibly high expectations. Yeah. And then they'll go to McDonald's or something. There's like a Taco Bell on like um, Hollywood Boulevard or uh-huh. whatever. And there's just so <laughs> many people who are pissed they don't have liquor. I was like, because um, I wanted to do this YouTube video of um, like uh, fast food places and like CVS's and Rite Aid, like in like Beverly Hills yeah. and like Bel Air, because rich people are incredibly out of touch. Sure. And when they leave a review, it's like, what? Why would this ever be a thing? Yeah, that's like anytime you look up, you're like trying to look up a location for any fast food restaurant. Yeah. And it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like two stars. And I'm like, who is rating this? No, seriously. It's going to be bad. You don't, Although, that was what was crazy in Japan. 
Everything was so clean. I yeah. could not believe. I was in heaven. I literally was like, I want to move here. Every, they, they clean everything. And yeah. I was like, people who come, who people who grew up in Japan and come visit the U.S. must be appalled by just the lack of towelettes handed out. Yeah. I felt like I would be like, oh, I'm going to use the bathroom at this gas station. They'd be like, would you like a warm, wet towelette? And I'd be yeah. like, yes, I would. Thank you so much. Okay, TikTok Live allows viewers and creators to interact in real time. Mm -hmm. As a creator, you may have access to live functions such as effects, multi-guest hosting, moderation, live gifts, and other settings. As a viewer, you can support your favorite creators' live content by watching their live videos, subscribing to their live communities, participating in the chat, uh, reacting to their live with virtual gifts, and more. Mm -hmm. And people Uh, do a bunch of crazy stuff on there. They do. I should utilize moderators more because I I don't have (laughs) anything particularly like no one comes in as like offensive. And if they are, it's funny at this point. Yeah. Like but I when they do ask the same question over and over again. But the thing is, is I end up with the weirdest muted words. It's like eyeshadow, (laughs) Clifford, you know, orange. And so like uh, now I've just got like this weird like comment filter on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy things people are doing on TikTok Live, there's a bunch of stuff. Creators and real life couple Jetty James and Autumn Ryan, who post joint content under the handle OJMEZ, spent over 16 days streaming nonstop or on the clock on TikTok Live last fall. Also, the pair have a DIY Big Brother setup where they broadcast from 10 cameras throughout their home, including one directly above their toilet. Uh huh. What? I feel like that's so common. This, like, I'm live. Obviously, this is an extreme version, but I'm yeah. live while I sleep. And I'm like, people are obsessed yeah. with seeing things they shouldn't be seeing. It's like voyeurism. But yes. um, why would you, how do you, okay, so would TikTok, TikTok not ban a live where it shows you pooping? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess not. It feels so wild because I will say straight up porn, I feel like, on my TikTok. Yeah. And then I'll post a video where there's like a song that's from TikTok that has a curse word in it and they're like banned and you're Deleted. you're two steps away from being <laughs> fully cut off the app. I'm like, okay. And then I've seen videos, there was this couple who there's like couples channel and they would put that vibrator, the remote control vibrators in their pants and like go out in public and like make each other have orgasms. Uh, and TikTok said, this is actually perfect. This is actually exactly <laughs> what we want. It's like a little warning at the bottom is like performed by a professional or something. Do <laughs> yeah, not attempt. Do not attempt. Yeah. There- oh, wait, that reminds me of, um. I don't know if I've said this before. Like I saw like a uh, viewer discretion, like this is performed by a professional and it was the actual footage of uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> oh my God. Dale Earnhardt like dying. Yes. And they were like, don't try this. This is performed wow. by a professional. I was like, the professional actually died doing it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but oh yeah. Oh my God. Um, people have also streamed a glass of milk on their counter where they're gone at work. 26.5 thousand people watched a live stream of a solo cup pyramid on TikTok uh, right while the guy who made it was sleeping. Yeah, there's so much stuff like that. I'm telling you, people are, but this is like why the Kardashians and toddlers and tiaras and people want to see the insides of people's homes. <laughs> They don't even want to know drama. It's like they want to know just like mundane. Yeah. I mean, there are accounts that are just like, here's that I fed my daughter for breakfast. Yeah. And they're, I'm like, who wants to see that the answer? Me. <laughs> for but, some reason, I want to see that. <laughs> That's the thing, though. It's like everything is content. And so, like, <clears throat> we are probably at some point in this episode or the next going to talk about, we are going to talk about family vloggers and stuff. So like when people choose to like exploit their children, I want to be like, you can literally film anything. It doesn't have to be your kid. There are people going to sleep on live, setting up a glass of milk in yeah. front of the camera and people have rewarded them thousands of dollars. Yes. As I keep, I'm yeah. like, to Ren Eleanor's mom, I'm like, set up a glass of milk like yeah. that i'm like go to sleep on live that's your answer just you fall asleep <laughs> on live and they'll watch um yeah it's truly so wild people are so nosy me included but that's why it's like i was talking to my partner about this i'm like that's why there has to just be a like laws in place for children oh yeah on the internet because i'm like people will not stop watching if it's there even if they are like i think it's bad this should be illegal they're gonna they're gonna click if there's a thumbnail that says my daughter almost dies getting her wisdom teeth out oh yeah people are gonna damn click if no yeah. one's in their room and it's 3 a.m and they say well i gotta watch what happens it's like there just has to be a law that's like no it's done nobody can see it no exactly people are too nosy um there's also we have to talk about him uh jason oh, nash God. is he's been begging on tiktok live 
Um, so this is the abridged version. So Jason rose to fame when he joined David Dobrik on YouTube in 2016 alongside the rest of the vlog squad or anyone who got, when Vine died, you know everyone, the mass migration. Um, in 2021, TikTok introduced its tipping feature where users can spend money buying virtual coins. It's now 29 cents to buy 20 coins and $250 for 16,500 coins. God, it's like Dave and Buster's, except the only thing you can do is make a woman lick an ice cream. <laughs> ice cream's so good. No, seriously. <laughs> what can I ask you? What your opinion? Do you feel bad for Jason Nash? No, he blew his money. <laughs> no, I don't either. I don't know what these <laughs> sob stories are on TikTok, but he he went uh, somewhere the, on some podcast the other day and was like. Well, yeah, I didn't know that this would end, and so I just was living like a rich guy. And I'm like, why are people, all the comments are like, yeah, he was really, um, you know, manipulated by David, which I, I don't care. I'm sure yeah. he, I'm sure see, he was. I don't really care. But I'm like, how do we feel bad for a person who was so rich and then, like, blew all their money, didn't make any financial plan, didn't yeah. put any investments, didn't do anything, and then now is like, I don't have any money. I'm yeah. like, okay, join the rest of them. Nobody has any. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, okay. I think it's just so bizarre. I think um, I, I think the thing is reversed. While I think there is something wrong with David Dobrik, 100%. Jason Nash is significantly older than him and met David when he was a teenager. And so, like, to suggest that Jason was the one who was manipulated, I'm like, the first off, the the establishment of the friendship was not based on anything healthy. Yeah. Either it was you I mean getting views together or like eventually becoming codependent like it's just sad. And, and I mean just, Oh sorry, go ahead. Like does he I mean I feel like do you have a financial advisor? Yes. I do as well. And so like yeah, the I think thing we have is the same one. Is that bad to share? Travis? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Travis? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um so yeah, um yeah. So, yeah, he should have gotten, like, a business manager or something. But also, it's like, I mean, you see this all the time. But it's like, my, it's like, I live in a really tiny, tiny apartment. Uh -huh. And I feel like I will see these people with, like, a similar following as me in these, like, mega mansions. I mean, you see it on Housewives all the time, as a oh, yeah. example. Because I don't even have a specific person I'm thinking. But they, like, are renting yeah. a, like, $50,000 a month house. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, And I think... Yeah, and I, I think it, it's a hard uh, thing because money, if you didn't get a good financial education, or yeah. you, like, there's so many things that factor into it. So it's definitely not like blame, like, oh, but I am like, if you find yourself in a bad financial situation after be giving a ton of money, yeah, I guess let that be a lesson. But also, I also Jason Nash is he, like a white guy that yeah. I think just had so much from the beginning. Because, well, look, I was 15 when David Dobrik, I feel like, started getting really big so yeah. of course I've been watching a couple videos when I was in high school you know yeah and I feel like since the beginning Jason Nash was kind of like this very this energy of like I deserve success uh -huh. which I think is very bizarre in this industry because I'm like this industry is so random like you can't it's not that anyone deserves it more or less just it's so random it's like yeah. this person got it maybe they didn't do any work and this person didn't get it and they've worked super hard and I felt like he just always on David's vlogs was like yeah, well, I tried to get on SNL, but look at me now. And it's like, you don't deserve to be on yeah. SNL just because you, like, are a white male comedian. Like, yeah. get in line, I guess. Um, so I think he just kind of was acting like, this is what I've always deserved. And I'm kind of yeah. like, that's sad because now look at look at you. I don't look know. Look at you. Um, it hurts. I mean, I still obviously don't want anyone to be struggling, so I feel bad. But anyways, yeah. he's always on TikTok Live begging for... Money does it work? Do you know? Does I he think, make a lot of money? I think it does, but I think it's just like the reason why it became like everyone like started talking about it is because like you just would see him all the time. Yeah, and you're like, damn, he never gets off. Who's like the who's a person on TikTok Live you always see? Because I I feel like everyone has a different person. It's always that lady um, who's like uh, selling wigs. Yes, I yeah. have her too. And she's always like, Janelle, thank you so much. If you buy one, you can get a second one for free. So make sure. I'm like, what is it? They talk so fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, is anyone buying these wigs? No, and then I, yeah. It's, so it's like QVC. And it, I mean, I guess it works in that way. Like, yeah. But I mean, if you, the thing is, is if you're going on TikTok Live to sell a product or like you have like some service that you're doing, like if you're like, I'm a cleaning business, we're on TikTok Live, watch us clean. Yeah. That makes so much sense for me. And it's like a dual income thing to go on live and to beg. Yeah. I mean, I, it seems 
sad. <laughs> it seems sad. I always get the woman who's selling rocks. Uh huh. She's like, it's this big thing of rocks that's constantly churning, and she like picks up a, th- she picks up a handful of them, and is like, ooh, you're very <laughs> lucky, and then like puts them in a bag, <laughs> and she's like showing the rocks, and I'm like, is any are these fake customers? They feel like fake customers. Yeah. Who's buying this bag of rocks? And then I also always I don't get this on live but they're promoting their lives a lot okay where it's like a middle-aged woman and they are like I haven't blinked on my they're screaming Uh I haven't blinked on my live in eight hours but if I blink I'll pour mustard on my head (laughs) and you're like oh no really sold out for this and and then you go to their live and they blink a bunch and then all the comments are like you did blink (laughs) and then they're covered in mustard (laughs) It's very upsetting. I am not going to challenge someone with a lead paint stare to a staring <laughs> contest. <laughs> There's also, oh yeah, so on a podcast, Trisha Paytas was quoted emphasizing the importance of providing a service versus begging for money is what we said. Yeah. And then Tana Mojo called out Jason Nash for de- begging for roses. And she said, can someone make Jason Nash a fucking DoorDash account? <laughs> if I open my TikTok one more time to see him begging for roses on my live for you page, I'm calling CPS. Have you seen your kids? He has kids. Kids? Yeah, he's two kids. Oh my god! They're like, te- they're like uh, I'm pretty sure one of them may be over 18 at this point, but they're like yeah. adult kids. Honestly, kind of makes it almost worse. Yeah, I feel like if you, I feel like when you're a a young kid, I do feel like if your parents just have a <laughs> a bunch of money, but they're doing something embarrassing on the internet, it probably doesn't affect you that much emotionally. Yeah, but like if I was 18 and my dad was Jason Nash. Oh my, going through high school with yeah. Jason Nash as your dad must be hell on earth. Yeah. Because it's like key demographic. No, exactly. Let me pitch something to Jason Nash. Everyone's telling you to get a job. And you're also an influencer who doesn't really want to get a job. How about you just do YouTube videos on me getting a job and <laughs> trying different jobs every week? That's you, good. You literally but you'd have to work to do that. This because he said on a video, he said in some interview that he was like, well, yeah, like when I used to make videos, like I didn't really put a lot of effort into them because I just knew they would get views because I was on David Dobrik's yeah. vlogs. I was like, yeah, so shut the fuck up. You've not yeah. worked for anything. Just shut up. <laughs> Dude, I would, this is literally like a, everyone's like, get a job. It's like Mike Rose Dirty Jobs, but it's yeah. like Jason Nash gets a job. <laughs> and so just like each week, there's 52 weeks, you can find like work at a Kohl's, yeah. Be a barista. And I think that'd be funny because you just see this old man complaining. Yeah. And all, he's being trained by teenagers who, like, don't want to be there <laughs> or, like, have heard of him. Or are making fun of him so much for being yeah. Jason Nash. Yeah, I actually feel like I've met a lot of people who, like, not met. I'm, once again, not talking about anyone specific. I never yeah. want to seem like I'm, like, roasting someone. But the, I feel like I've heard of a lot of people who were influencers and then had, you know, a big crash and their viewers or whatever. Yeah. And they were like, I don't have any money. And people were like, Oh, get a job. And they were like, I can't get a job. Like, I feel like you hear it all the time in yeah. LA, especially where they're like, I can't work. I'm literally Meryl Streep. Yeah. And you're like, no, you can get a job. Also, there's so many remote jobs if you're like, actually, like, oh, oh yeah. I was really famous and working would be horrible. I don't know. I'm still like, you'd probably be fine. Um, but I'm like, yeah, go DoorDash. I used to, I did for so long, I did TikTok and DoorDash yeah. together. Um, and there was like a couple weird interactions where like I would come in to get something. Yeah. It wasn't weird. And they'd be like, oh my God, I know you from TikTok. And I think I would feel a little like, uh, but that's stupid. I would feel a little like, oh, I'm embarrassed. You see me <laughs> Can working. I get some smoothies now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, that's stupid. It's fine. And it was always a nice interaction. Um, but you could also work as a, but I think people get so like, I can't, if I start working a job, I've officially let go of my, Yeah. and I'm like, no, you just would be able to afford your rent and you can keep making videos. It's okay. No, seriously. Like when uh, Vine died, I worked in advertising and like, I, so I, and I loved it. I love like writing stuff. Yeah. And so like, I don't, I'm not, if I ever get for some reason tired of influencing or, or comedy, I do have like things that I'd like to do. I'd yeah. like to go back in advertising or I'd like to be a guidance counselor. Yeah. Um, but Does that be your career? If you like had to career change tomorrow, would it be guidance counselor? Yeah. Think? Like had, but like I, so this is, they're, they're not even backup plans. They're like also things I'm just like passionate about. Yeah. Like I love helping the youth i don't know but the thing is is with the guidance counselor i was thinking about being a therapist but you need to actually go to med school for that yeah sadly and funnily enough um you don't need to you just need to finish college to be a guidance counselor yeah yes there's a lot of crazy laws like that where i I, i've had i've had quote-unquote therapists before where i've later been like what's going on here they don't seem good and i look it up and they're not a certified therapist it's very wild you can very easily which i think um you know, obviously there's pros and cons because yeah. sometimes people be 
nuts. But people are great. <laughs> the thing is, is with therapists, like you have to wonder why they're drawn to that profession. Yeah. It's like cop, you know, it's like, yeah, maybe. And I know that there are people who genuinely want to help in the therapy realm. But like, um, it's also like, I feel like you may have been drawn to this because you're trying to figure something out on yourself. Yeah. So maybe I, I was in an AP psychology class in high school. Yeah. Did not do well. <laughs> It's the only AP class I ever took. I've probably talked about this before, but I loved it so much. Like oh, I was yeah. obsessed. I was front row, raising my hand for every question. I think I've told you this. And he just kept being like, no, but I'm, <laughs> you are wrong at every turn, but I appreciate your passion. I would come in and I'd be like, I actually did extra work because I was so interested in this topic that I watched a whole documentary about it and I read a book or whatever. Yeah. I tried to read about it, whatever. And then first question in class, he'd be like, no, what? How do you not understand this? I was so bad. I was like the only one in my whole class that failed the AP psych test. Yeah. Um, but everyone in that class was like self-diagnosing the whole oh, yeah. time where it was like by the end of the AP psych class, people were like, I have schizophrenia. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe you do, but <laughs> you should get a real diagnosis because that if you do, you really need some, you know, that's a yeah. big deal. Um, but every, because you, they do it, they talk about depression and everyone's like, wait, do I have depression? And some people did, but some people I'm like, no, you're just in high school. It sucks out yeah. here. We're all struggling. Um, and so I do think sometimes people can get obsessed with like psychoanalyzing yeah. themselves versus like, uh, oh, I see a need in the mental health space and want to yeah. like, really be a good person there, which I think is great. But I think it's always like most jobs hit or miss. Yeah. I um, I know that I- – I feel like I've I've definitely psychoanalyzed myself into like oblivion. But like when I was first starting out, like I literally thought I was a sociopath because I was when when I was like in high school because oh, oh, oh. I had such a difficult time understanding emotions. Um, and then I like I was like me and my dad are so similar. He's a sociopath too. Mm-hmm. So I remember one time I sat down with him and I was like, Dad, we are sociopaths. <laughs> and he's like, You really think of that of me? And I was like, Dude. We're so bad with emotions. For some reason, it reminds me of that TikTok sound that's like, do you want to form an alliance? <laughs> yes. And then I realized later, it's just like autism. Mm. But then I- Do you think that, your dad is autistic? I think he yeah. is. Because my dad, like when he gets, like he's, I know he gets overwhelmed, like sensory like issues. Um, He like locks on to things, but also he's so passionate about things that he- does like he loves music um he plays like the bass guitar the trombone and one other brass instrument if i was in band i'd be able to identify it but like he (laughs) and then reading he both my parents love to read but like one time when i went to the barnes and noble with my dad he is a programmer but he picked up a book of c plus plus yeah and he was just like oh this is he was literally like (laughs) what and i was like that's literally programming language why are you laughing but yeah i think he's autistic oh man oh poor guy um, not poor guy for being on no. <laughs> poor guy for having no idea what's happening in no. his brain. That feels hard. Um, yeah. So Jason Nash begs sleep influencers. This is what oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with. Not obsessed in a good way. Just fascinated by it. There's so many people who just go to sleep on TikTok live. And one that comes up on mine all the time, uh-huh. which is the ones that I'm like, should I call someone? What's going on? It is a middle-aged man, two children asleep in they're not in the U.S., I don't think. Uh-huh. They're sleeping on, like, uh, it, uh, not a great situation, it seems. Yeah. All the, the cl- bedding is dirty, and they're just, like, asleep. And I'm like, what's going on? Sometimes there's, like, an infant where you're like, that baby should not be <laughs> sleeping yeah. like that. And it feels so crazy. And there's hundreds of thousands of people watching. That is what is so wild. If you get – people want to see what is going on. Like, yeah. I feel like – and that – kind of falls into what you were talking about with like why people would get into a profession. Yeah. Because I also sometimes will see these, like a lot of body cam footage has been showing up on my For You page, which is always hard because I'm like, I don't want to watch this. Like this always brings down my mood. I uh, hate so much about what's going on in this video and how this is being handled. But I think because of course your brain is like something is, uh, you know, I get served normal videos all the time where someone's like, here's the story of the time I, and I'm like, skip. And then if someone comes up and it's like, a copying like, ma'am, where's your... Ca-? Of course yeah. my brain's going to be like, what's this about? Yeah. So then my For You page keeps thinking, I want to see this. And I'm like, absolutely not, absolutely not. I oh, just yeah. like, is interesting, I guess, or just uh, different than what I usually see. Um, but there's all these comments talking about like, this is why I want to be a social worker or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, that's great. But I do think sometimes people would get into that to be like, I literally just want to like see drama. Like yeah. I love drama. And like if I was the first person to be called to a scene where there was a bunch of drama, oh, yeah. I want to see what's going on with there. Yeah. 
um, with that. So that is always hard. But the sleeping stuff is so bizarre. I yeah. I mean, I know that we as humans have like morbid curiosity, but um, sleep influencers, uh, hundreds of TikTok users begin live streaming themselves overnight while they sleep. There's two types of sleep fluencers. Um, the first, keep things simple, <laughs> literally live streaming themselves peacefully sleeping, sometimes for hours at a time. Usually they'll, um, sometimes they'll have a nightmare. Uh, and the other type is a little bit more disturbing. Their streams are both live and interactive, meaning they'll attempt to go to sleep, but they'll do so in a room filled with booby traps <laughs> that can be triggered by paying viewers. That's what I want to see. Uh, oh my God, what happens depends on how much the viewers pay. Dude, imagine swatting a uh, sleep influencer. Oh my God. Isn't that illegal? Did you tell me that? Yeah, it Setting is. up booby traps in your home? Oh, wait, no. Um, The swatting is also illegal. No, that, yes, I know swatting is illegal. But didn't you tell me that it's like illegal to set up a booby trap in your home? If you, I think in your home, it may be fine on your lawn in your backyard oh. where there's like a reasonable expectation that someone may be soliciting or like the mailman could go, then you can't set up a booby trap. Yeah, because imagine if like Jeffrey Dahmer came into your house and yeah. then he got you had to pay him because you got a booby trap. And no, yeah. he, even if he was going to murder you and you're like, well, I guess that wasn't really how he usually did stuff, but yeah, still, or it'd be like, annoying. Like there's like a... Um, like a movie app. I mean, I know there is a second movie to Home Alone, but like the kid gets arrested yeah. for like setting up so many booby traps. Um, that would be nuts. Also, there is what's called a sleep depri deprivation live streamer where they oh. see how long they can stay awake. I feel like this needs to be said. I'm pretty sure you can die from that. No, you and can. It, yeah. I, I feel like it was so common when I was younger for people to be like, how long can we stay up? Yeah. And I had a friend in high school who was like, me and my friend are seeing how long we can stay up. And they stayed up for like multiple days. And by the end, we're like hallucinating. And I always think about that because at the time I was like, you guys are crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, they could have died. What a horrible way to die. No, yeah. Like, um, I know you, uh, you can survive without eating for a while. But you have to have water within like a couple of days, and sleep. I think you is on par with water. Yeah. Yeah. Man, very scary. There's um. So they are there are like things like on Twitch they also sleep on camera. But I did want to go down to um. There was a uh, when it comes to a first time sleep influencer, the peaceful sleeper. There is a clinical psychologist named Phoebe Rogers says many viewers are longing for connection. And she says, I think we all have a longing for connection and a voyeur part or curious part of us who wants to have insight into the life of another. Um, it may fill a need for belonging, connection, or intimacy. Sleep is quite an intimate thing. It may also fill a void of loneliness or disconnection. For a lot of people, it can be easier to connect in the online space than in real life. I do understand that. This is what I will... Okay, so I'm trying to put myself in these people's shoes. I um, have ADHD. Mm -hmm. So when I'm cleaning, I have to, the Vivans has to immediately hit. And I like to turn on vi like YouTube videos of someone in real time cleaning their house. Yeah. But that's uh, my take on body doubling. Yeah. If I can't call a friend over and be like, sit in the corner so I can clean, I watch a YouTube video of someone cleaning yeah. and then I'm in the mood. Or but I know people do that with studying. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the idea of like, watching someone sleep i don't necessarily think that is the craziest part of it because i'm like the watching someone just sleep because some of them it's like it's an adult just in their really nice bedroom and yeah. they're asleep and i'm like i wouldn't watch this but there's a lot of things i don't watch on the internet like yeah. i'm like yeah i get why people are into it there's also a lot of things i watch on the internet that i'm sure people are like why are you watching that who cares yeah. um so i think it's just so niche i think when it gets like like the children in this like dirty house with yeah. this man asleep. I'm like, why do you want to watch this? Like, what about this is comforting to you? Ooh, maybe it's the um, potential like watching in case there's a threat. Yeah, I think that one probably is more interest based. Yeah, where it's more like what's going on here. Mm -hmm. um, and people give in so much. Like, I know it's very common to oh, an episode we I would love to do is yeah. about that woman who went viral for feeding her kids like shit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Feeding her kids shit? No, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> feeding her kids like shit. Oh, oh. Like, th she feeds them bad. Like, she she was called, like, the donut mom. Yeah. Did you hear about this? No. She went viral. I won't go on a huge tangent, but it, she went viral because she was like, <laughs> like, make my two-year-old's lunch with me. And uh -huh. it's her cutting up, like, a ho-ho donut and, like... <laughs> hot Cheetos. I don't fucking know. Like, so, just yeah. like a nightmarish breakfast. And people were like... Uh, then obviously a lot of people were like, this is child abuse. But then some moms were like, 
don't judge her. And then they would post a video of them like taking their kid through the Dunkin' Donuts drive through and be like, oh, uh-huh. am I such a bad mom? And I'm like, okay, this is very different. That's very different. Giving your kid a donut ever so often yeah. is different from like cutting up a donut for your two year old. I don't know, whatever. Um, but then people were like, I don't think she really does this over time after stalking her channel for truly hours. Yeah. I do think she does feed her kids this way. But some people were like, she's just posting this to get engagement. Like yeah. pe- she's just doing something crazy to yeah. get engagement. So I think people are so susceptible to that. Oh yeah. Where they will just like I mean, in all those videos where there's like cleaners, yeah. There's like those weird cleaning videos where they'll be like night like after school routine of an eight year old boy. Have yeah. you seen these? They're yeah. very bizarre and I'm obsessed with them. But They'll always like open the freezer and there'll be like a baby doll in there. Oh, and yeah. then all the comments are like, why is there a baby doll in the freezer? And I'm like, wow, like a it's cause, moth to a flame. No, seriously, <laughs> you, you want more engagement. So you put something weird in. Yeah. Like how you were, you talked about this like a couple of months ago where you were like, uh, and it's not like you get something wrong or you say something and then people like latch onto that and yeah. that causes engagement. Yeah. Did what were you saying? I don't remember, but I'll, I'll be talking and talking and talking. But <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, to talk. That's actually like such a perfect topic. Uh, rage bait. Yes, that, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like this woman does not feed her kids like this. She's yeah. just getting rage bait. But I'm like, she does feed her kids like this. And also sometimes on the Internet, people will be posting this stuff. I especially see it. And then we'll get back to live. I'm sorry. I know I'm going on a tangent. But people will post these, like, relatable mom videos, quote unquote. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, you have to be careful with what you are posting. Where they will post their, like, hoarder level disgusting houses where there's, like, cockroaches. And they're like, I know, guys. It's bad. Uh But this is my rock bottom. And I'm officially cleaning up. So join me for 30 days of getting my house together. And Uh I'm like, you are going to get your kids taken away. Like, be careful. I mean, I guess I'm like, I, if that's your truth, yeah, that's a dangerous situation for children to be in. Yeah. But also I'm like, I think sometimes people just be like, I can post what I do to my kids all the time on the internet. Yeah. I'm a relatable mom. And I'm like, you should look up neglect laws before you do that because you're going to get in big trouble and there's yeah. going to be a lot of proof of this. Do you no, know what I mean? Yes. Um, it is great that you are helping yourself and getting help, but that is something I do see also with, uh, since I do talk a lot about addiction, I do see with mothers or parents who are getting clean yeah. and I'm like, I love that you're on a journey, but you absolutely should not mention your kids in this video yes. at all. You have to be careful. And yeah. not to sound like I'm like, if you're neglecting your kids, yeah. keep it to yourself. Because I'm like, no. But there's some people where they're clearly working through something. But I'm yeah. like, not everything needs to be on the internet. You are going to get yourself in really big trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, and I see that on TikTok Live to bring it back. Seriously. <laughs> okay, so debate me lives. Ooh, what's that? Um, so a debate me live stream will show a photo of a prompt or a statement. Oh. Yeah. That the host plans to debate with viewers via live comments uh, sections or by inviting viewers to speak on their live. Essentially, these lives are like a conference call that anyone can join. And, um, you know, there's lives with more than six people who are able to converse. Debate Me Live focuses on simple subjects like, is Jesus real? Does sin exist? Or even does the vaccine work? Here's the thing, though. When you, uh, you've already pretty much lost this debate because it's not going to be in good faith. And so the thing is, is if you engage with someone, if you answer someone's question, sometimes you are agreeing to the premise of their question. And it's going to be hard to debate your point because Mm. you're going to have to actually backpedal and explain why the premise is flawed. Yeah. 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 And everyone who does TikTok live debates, I've seen the ones where it'll be like, they bring one person on who's voting for Biden and one person on who's voting for Trump. Yeah. But the two people talking are like the biggest idiots you've ever seen on planet Earth. So one yeah. of them's like, I think abortion is baby killing. And the other one's like, well, I don't because I actually like, ha- I like, I know someone who had an abortion and it was like actually really good. And yeah. it's just like, <laughs> what is this? Like yeah. no one needs to hear this. No, seriously. I mean, it's like, then you also have to think about the personality type that is, enticed by debating right. but i did find out that people with adhd get um dopamine from arguing interesting so like if you, <laughs> that's if, not good like in but i mean it's not i mean it could be like because there are healthy arguments yeah like i don't know what i disagree with you on a lot i don't know but i get i feel like people will say my partner and i are like we have so many uh they're not arguments but we love to what is it called when you just uh riff? Dis- <laughs> what 
uh, debate debate we, we yeah, like yeah. yeah the word we've been said sorry <laughs> I we love to debate and our roommate is always like it's so funny because i will walk like i'll walk by your guys's room and i'll hear you guys <laughs> like the other day my girlfriend and i got into this big debate uh-huh. about what we would do if our 14 year old daughter told us she was pregnant uh-huh a situation that is not happening we're not planning on having children yeah but we love to just debate and yeah. go back and forth and back and forth or what would you do if this happened and i think some people will be like Oh, are you guys arguing? And we're yeah. like, no, this this topic matters to neither of us. We yeah. just love to debate. No, seriously. So I that's think interesting. That is. Like, I feel like a lot of people would assume that you're arguing because you want to be right. But sometimes you just want to like, I don't know. It does feel like yeah. you just want to talk. We just, <laughs> just want to talk. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, people love to watch that on TikTok Live. And I think people just like, they don't care, obviously, especially when it's such... Uh, ends of the spectrum on TikTok Live where it'll be like, do you believe in God or not believe in God? It's like most people are on one end of the spectrum who are watching oh, yeah. that live and that's probably why. I don't think anyone's there to like figure out what they think about it. Yeah. Um. So I don't think it's really people trying. I guess the debate doesn't really matter. People just yeah. like to see people argue, which is why I watch The View. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jake said what ends up happening is uh, streaming hosts attract people with severely transphobic beliefs that give them a platform to spew hate. Yeah, like, okay, this this is the thing. Um, if I was going to actually do a legit debate and I wanted to challenge people and I was, quote unquote, willing to hear out Republicans, I would say you can say whatever you want, but I would just mute like f- like key phrases. Yeah. You Because if you actually understand the concept behind something, Yes. You don't need to use the actual word for it. Yeah. But the thing is, is they probably couldn't do that without <laughs> using the words I said, don't yes. use. I'm not silencing you. I'm just asking you to like yeah. work around. And if yeah. you can't work around, you're not well-versed enough. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of those topics are hard, though, because if you get too well-versed, you might change your opinion. <laughs> no, yeah. Like if you actually made an attempt to learn about why you hate the people you hate, you're like, oh, shit, they're people. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, there are pros to live stream commerce for sellers' sense of community. Mm-hmm. Um, while traditional online shopping is uh, solitary, live stream commerce have a communal feel. Consumers are able to see and be seen in what might be thought as a meaningful social moment. Algorithm connects sellers to people with their similar interests. I disagree with that because I'm literally only shown a woman selling wigs and rocks. I have bought <laughs> literally three wigs in the past month, but not from a TikTok live. So, like, maybe they're onto something. Yeah. Um, also, there's a super large reach. TikTok is over 1 billion monthly active user- users worldwide, and users spend an average of 95 minutes per day scrolling through random videos. What I do, okay, so what there's um, on TikTok, there has been this massive shift to like the marketplace. And while that does have its own issues, um, I, I understand that people need jobs and income. And so, like, I also do ads. So I'm not going to be like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, but yeah. like, what I love about the, if I'm going to buy something, it, I would prefer you go live because if you'll notice whenever like someone's like, this is a product that I got off t- TikTok shop, there are so many questions. Mm. And so like I know particularly for clothes, I would want to go on a live and be like, bend over. Yeah. Let's see like how it cuts you in half. And uh, no, not like, like just because like, you know. They're those... like selling a candle. They're like, Sarah, stop <laughs> asking me to bend over. I'm not going to do it. No, seriously, But like sometimes, what is it? Like Zara ads where yeah. they're in those weird contorted positions. But <laughs> sometimes when I see a model pose, I'm like, no one naturally stands no. like that. And so like I'd prefer, can you stand to the side and yeah. relax? Like I want to see how the pants fit when you're yeah. relaxed. Well, also there's just no shame in selling stuff online. So there is times where I've seen someone like, or I've seen a, a model with pants and they show a close up on the fabric and then you receive it and you're like, this is a different pair of pants. Yeah. So I feel like it's nice to watch someone on live be like, this is what I would be receiving. No, exactly. What have you bought recently on TikTok Live? I haven't bought anything, but I've been informed. I watch, mm. the only thing I would watch and I do watch is color matching. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I love, there's a there's a lady, I don't know what her name is, but she goes live and she color matches clients. Mm. And I'm obsessed with, I used to think it was a, a crockable shit. Mm-hmm. But no, they're actually, some people are, uh, well, people are warmer, cool-toned, or neutral. Yeah. So it's nice to see, like, what colors make, compliment them. Every time I watch those videos, I am like, I am famously so bad at dressing myself. Yeah. I just am not good, not good at fashion. But even, like, I'll put on a thing I'm trying to match, and I'm like, people be like, that doesn't match at all. I'm like, oh no. But so every time I watch those color matching videos, 
all the colors look the same to me. I'm like, I don't know. I always thought it'd be yeah. like so clear. I'd be like, then those are her colors. But people in the comments are like, wow, the way it really changed everything. And I'm like, I don't see it. What is wrong with me? Okay, so for our original concept photo shoot of this, like the BCC Club, I was trying to find a color that we both look good in. Uh -huh. I color matched you several times. <laughs> you are a warm spring. Warm spring. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm a cool summer. So how did you pick blue? Um, well, this is a warm blue. Um, you can see because it's more yellow than blue. Uh -huh. I don't know if that makes sense. No, yeah, that makes Can sense. I see your wrist? Have we done this before? Yeah, you showed me. You said I have green veins. Yeah, you have something. green veins, which means you have a yellow tint to your skin, which means you're warm. And if you have like, if you look at your veins and they're more blue than they are green, that means you're likely cool toned. Wow. Yes, that's incredible. I gotta get. I gotta have you color analysis me. I guess I would, you just did, but I a real a real intense one. Any where you pick up my full wardrobe. Any warm, vibrant color is probably your shtick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I know I wear black a lot. Uh huh. And I know it doesn't. I, it, not that it looks bad on me, but I'm just like I know this is not like my color. Like I, I see in photo, but I'm just like so nervous mm -hmm. to wear colors because I feel like anytime I have bought a really, sorry, I just like ate the microphone. Anytime I have picked a really vibrant thing at the mall, yeah, I feel like I wear it once, see a photo of myself in it, and I'm like, absolutely not. And then I like never wear it again. Uh -huh. So I get so scared to like buy colorful things. Yeah, But then like I went on, I was on this like uh, the show a while ago and uh, the the stylist put me in this like specific blue yeah that is so interesting because it's very similar to this yeah and I was like wait a minute I look incredible like yeah. I took a selfie and was like my eyes are popping in a way they've never popped before like I yeah. feel so good and I was like see I need to just slowly find what colors work for me and yeah. buy a bunch of stuff in those colors because I I'm always like I don't like the way I look in black either and mm -hmm. but I get so nervous to like scurry out into color clothes well then I would say um since you're like a spring black is probably a bit harsh yeah you should try gray okay yeah and what to do for the sweating just <laughs> botox in the pits <laughs> i don't know oh um have you ever had botox in your own pits no but i i really need it i've heard that okay because i have thought about it yeah although to be honest my pits are not where i sweat most of the time under boob no my back vagina <laughs> <laughs> so sweaty all yeah. the time it is uh horrible and it causes i have to change pants all the time anyway what type of underwear do you wear cotton oh wow so it's pretty I've breathable heard that's what i should wear but it's so bad i was on a 13 hour flight the other day i thought i was going to lose my mind yeah and i got i bring clothes to the airport uh -huh. to, so i don't know if i can get botox there but uh, maybe i can but i've heard that if you get botox in a place it's like your body will sweat somewhere else more um Mm, I mean, the if you are like the the moisture still needs to escape. Yeah. So yes, but I mean, uh, the if more comes out of my vagina, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I will do. Do you wear a lot of bicycle shorts? Yes, you know that I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't come for me. So am I. No, so am I. I am. Um, I only wear bicycle shorts. <laughs> no, I. Uh, I. That's that might be what's because um, it's fabric that's against your skin. Yeah. But I do that because the chafing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. You could wear a pad. Yeah. Well, I did get period underwear a while ago, uh -huh. and sometimes I'll just wear that as my regular underwear. Oh my God. Very I... upsetting. No, it's not upsetting, it's functional. Um, there also are live streams. <laughs> Go ahead. There are cons to live streams uh, for commerce, like for sellers. Um, uh, some users are fed up with the amount of ads and content aimed at. Yeah, so it could be just annoying because it does feel like you're being bombarded with like selling. Um, you also can, guys, you can block hashtags, block hashtag ad, and mm. there you go. Half that shit will be gone. Um, but so then make an exception for our ads. So put, but unless Sarah and Kendall post hashtag ad, then you can see yeah, it. Yeah, like if you know coding, be like <laughs> block hashtag ad colon allow. Yeah. Kendall and Sarah's ads. Um, that's good to know. And you could probably like, uh, get, cause I think sometimes the Amazon shop stuff is hard for me because I'm like, well, I don't really want to buy from Amazon, but also yeah. I do feel like people lie on there, oh, they're yeah. trying, which I understand they're trying to make money. But I think, do you ever feel like it gets similar to almost like, um, a pyramid scheme on TikTok, yeah. TikTok lives where you're like, this person is not making money. Like I, they only have like a couple followers. They're pushing so hard for 
people to buy on their Amazon storefront. Yeah. I don't think anyone is, but they're putting so much time in it. And I'm like, I feel bad because I feel like there's probably all these people online. They're like, here's how to make 200K a month on t- Amazon storefront. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something I, I want to pitch to a lot of like sellers on TikTok. Um, so since you're new to the ad space, um, what I would do, you, I, I feel like everyone's using the same approach and that's when I, it's kind of grinding my gears. I kind of want to see someone lean into like ASMR style selling because you can be more intentional with the product. Mm-hmm. And also, um, Seeing a lot of ads is immediately agitating. Yeah. And ASMR is very calming. Yeah. And so, like, it'll immediately disarm yeah. the person who's already agitated. And then they will, and ASMR content gets viewed for a lot longer. Yeah. So, I would try leaning into that if you want. Yeah. I also yeah. think you just have to build trust with, oh, which yeah. Which is unfortunate because it's like you're not going to start making money very fast. But I think there's people like Kat Ben. I know I've talked to you about her before. She, I, yeah. She's like the pers- first person I followed on TikTok, and I'm obsessed with her. She's a clean, she cleans her house. Okay. She lives in the, like middle America. I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. Um, I will never live. I mean, her fridge restocks are like Slim Jim's chocolate milk. Oh, baby yeah. Baby Bell yeah. cheese. I'm like, oh my God, I love it. I'm obsessed with her. But she for a long time didn't do ads because she was just starting up on TikTok. And yeah. so I became obsessed with her cleaning videos. And I honestly would naturally just buy products. Like if I saw her use it and I was going to buy cleaning products, yeah. buy what she had. Um, and so now if she posts an ad that's like, I just got this new vacuum and it's bomb. Yeah. Even though it's an ad and I know that even if she didn't like it, she would have to say she liked yeah. it. I'm still like, all right, I trust it more because Kat Ben said yeah. it. I think that's such an, an unfortunate thing uh, where sometimes people be like, why do influencers get paid all whatever? Yeah. And that I guess is a nuanced thing. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, because not everyone can just like, they're not getting paid for making this video. They're getting yeah. paid for like the reach that they have. That for some reason people are like, I will buy whatever this person says. Yeah. Which is, I don't know, a, maybe you can explain the type of psych- psychology that is. I don't know. But people, yeah, if they trust you, they'll buy it for some reason. You want to feel a part of a community. So like a lot of things with like um, overconsumption, you, the main thing is, is like, what you want to be part of a trend, which m- brings you in with others. In capitalism, like people bond through what they have. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And so, like you see a creator, you like them, you want to be like them, or you're influenced by them. And so, this is a product they claim to use, and you want to feel it's a, you know, yeah, as one with them. Um, so yeah, it makes sense. It also is uh, makes sense why a lot of people who haven't established like a name for themselves or made like a real legit connection yeah. to the product probably can't sell as yeah. well. You gotta you gotta some sort of trust. You know, they need yeah. to know who you are. Which is just the unfortunate part of this industry. Like I think people show these, especially like lifestyle influencers all the time, where it's just yeah. like this girl who like. There's no reason why she is like why Emily Mariko specifically. Yeah, got, it, I don't have an answer. It's just so it's like yeah, I do. Uh, okay, I mean maybe what what do you think? She does not speak English, and she is doing a task that can be universally does enjoyed. She not? No, she's not speaking English. Like she's oh, not. I was like, I did not know she didn't well, no, speak English. Well, no, so she doesn't speak in her videos, and so like there's a language barrier between content creators. Oh, sure. So she has no language that she she can speak, obviously, but like it can be universally enjoyed, and also cooking is a universally enjoyed totally. like task. So anyone anywhere can enjoy her stuff, yeah. but. To but watch. there's other people that do that, I guess. Yeah, and they blow up. Uh, to, but to enjoy like our content, you do have to have some knowledge of English. Not by next year. <laughs> I'm Japanese. Doing all my videos in Japanese. And maybe German. <laughs> yeah. But I just think there's a lot of people where that'll be like, uh, okay, maybe Emily Marie is a bad example, but they'll like, you know, do the videos where they put the clips in their hair and they do their makeup and they're just like, hey guys, here's what I'm using. And I'm like, I don't have an answer why that person has blown up necessarily. Yeah. Maybe if I psychoanalyze them, I could, but there's so many people who do videos like that. And sometimes I'll come across them and we're like, they're so funny. Why does this video only have three likes? That's yeah. interesting. And that's just the shitty part of this industry. It's so random and there's no way to like, um, I mean, I think it's a new, it's not fully random, but I think there are people where you're like, I don't know why they blew up, but yeah. they just did. They did. Um, TikTok NPC trend. Like, yeah, a strange TikTok trend where users live stream themselves acting like NPCs are automated non-player characters with pre-written dialogue. <gasps> that's, ice cream's so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. That's what she does. Ice cream's so good. Oh, yeah. But that's, um, I mean, I, I, I always see like people comment like NPC and I want to be like, this is a residual like it, it, like individuality complex or like main character syndrome where like oh look at someone doing that weird thing it's also like 
that, I don't know. Do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? No. Say it one more time. Are you talking about comments on your videos? Or you... no? When everyone's like, "Oh, this is like an NPC behavior." Oh. It's like you know that you're not the only person in the world. Like this person is just walking. You know? Yeah. 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 What do you mean? I don't know, dude. No, I just am so unversed. I'm like, I need to be more chronically online. I really like not. You're not chronically Excuse online. But me? I know not. No, me. Yeah, I, I need am. to be like more. I don't know anything. About, I don't mean chronically online in a negative way. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like an NPC. I don't know what that is. It's like, um, but it's the person in the video games, right? From what I just read, it's like that you come up to and they talk to you. Yeah, and everyone's like calling anyone an NPC because they assume that they're like the main character of life. The person commenting it. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm sorry. I understand. No, you were making sense. Sometimes I'm just like, some internet terms, I'm like, I don't know what that is. I need to be so, I'm so on the internet all the time. Yeah. I never mean to sound like I'm like, I'm unplugged. I'm not. Don't be fooled. Yeah. I'm so on the internet. Um, But it's on things that don't matter and I'm never with it. I'm sometimes like, I've gotten served, like the internet thinks I am a 50 year old woman. Yeah. So when a person who's my age is talking to me sometimes, I'm like, I'm not. I did not know this was what was going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing that's being served to me right now on TikTok is Kate Middleton drama. Missing. <laughs> missing. Uh, wow. The day happened? this comes out. Uh, she'll be found. She'll be found. No, the day <laughs> this comes out is when the BBC is going to make their big announcement. Of what? I don't know. I, I think King Charles is dead. Oh. But I think people are like, they're going to announce that Kate Middleton is like in on Mars and there's gonna be footage of her. I'm like, no, there's gonna be nothing. I yeah. don't think that interesting. Or she killed King Charles. I, I mean, I don't know, but I think if she killed King Charles. <laughs> I'm just like, they're not gonna tell us what we want to know. Like yeah. this thing on Wednesday, they're never gonna tell the the royal family is never gonna tell us what we want to know. We're yeah. never gonna know the dirt. I think what's been interesting, and I've heard this through a mixture. My knowledge on this is a mixture of 700 TikTok videos. So. Okay. I need to say that so everyone knows this is not factual. And also, I'm probably jumbling so many different theories. But people were like, uh, it's interesting that this is kind of the first time the like the press and the royal family have such a close, like, pact, basically. Yeah. Where they're like, you do not share stuff about this. And then if you do that, we will give you some information that is going to be good for you. Yeah. But then... I think people were like, because you know those doctored photos came out of Kate Middleton. Yeah. And I think the royal family gave the, who fucking knows? But I, I think people were like, oh, the press is mad that this is happening, that they were given yeah. doctored photos. So now they're kind of retaliating uh -huh. and releasing some information that maybe the royal family didn't want to know. I'm like, oh, and I guess that's never happened before. So interesting time. I hope Kate's okay. I don't know. Yeah. No I, one in that family's okay. I mean, if you are in the royal family, no. your life is shitty. I don't know. Seriously, they just need to create a TikTok account and go live <laughs> with their announcement. <laughs> and like the what's the what's what's that lady that sucks? The queen? Uh, Camilla? No, she um, I don't think I Camilla. don't know. Yeah, Cam Queen Camilla, Camilla like keeps getting like, you know, banana thrown at her on live. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kate's in the back going, ice cream's so good, <laughs> yeah. ice cream's so good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what they should have done. They should have gone live with Kate Middleton sleeping, yeah. recovering from <laughs> she, her abdominal surgery, so yeah. we would have known what was going on. Um, we'll see what happens when this comes out. Comment down below. The news, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, God, I hope it's not something so much worse than I could have ever thought, like something so sad, and then all the comments are like, yeah, this is not funny. Dang. This is really upsetting. Well, we'll cut it out. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm so happy to be back in the I'm States so with you, Sarah. I'm so happy that you are back. I know. I was telling Sarah before this, I'm bummed because I got you a present in Japan, but it's not. I left it on my side table at my house. But yeah. So look forward to it week after next. It's okay. going to be here. Well, no, then I got to bring something as well. No. No, no. Um, thank you so much for listening to this episode about TikTok Live. If you've ever gone live on TikTok, drop it down below. Or if you have a favorite live that you just think we should look up, mm -hmm. let us know down below. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. YouTube. Um, YouTube. Anywhere you get your podcasts. Literally, make sure to like and subscribe, guys. Make sure to send us a... Ice cream so good. <laughs> yeah. Comment ice cream so good. <laughs> um, maybe we'll do a live episode one day. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do one. We'll put it. You up. just literally hear all the stutters. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. The only thing that's ever edited out of this podcast is us being like, "Sorry, start over one more time." I'm gonna try to read it again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Edit that. Start over one more time. Okay, I'm gonna do it. So it would not be something you'd want to see. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks so much for being here, and I hope you have a happy Wednesday. All right, we will talk to you next week, guys. Bye.